Today we're looking at the Fender Deluxe Reverb and the Princeton Reverb. One, the other, or both? Hey there, welcome to That Pillar Show, Dan here. Mick here, hello. Um, we've been waiting to do this show for a really long time. First of all, thank you for being here. Indeed. Please subscribe and... Uh, also, please visit thatpillarshowstore.com and buy everything. Just buy everything. Just buy, buy, everything. buy stuff. Uh, it helps. Yeah. Um, so we've been wanting to make the show for ages. The reason being... You may be able to relate to this. You go through your playing life and you are almost entirely blind to some really classic gear that you should have played more. Yeah. One of those things for us was a 65 Deluxe Reverb, you know, middle of Fender's line for so long in terms of power, ubiquitous in recording, club gigs. Yeah. Just such a stalwart of guitar amplification down the years, whether it is in blackface form like this or the previous tweed ones, whatever. Dan and I played them down the years, but we'd never really owned one. So a few months back, we tried the 65 Deluxe Reverb reissue, the standard one, nothing fancy, against the digital modeling Tone Master one. Mm -hmm. And we decided we preferred the tube one. So we bought it. What then happened was loads and loads and loads of questions and comments saying, but you really need a Princeton as well. We really do. <laughs> and again, we both played Princetons down the years. Again, whether it's in the um, tweed form or whether the um, blackface form like this, coming forward into the silverface era. But I think it's fair to say that the 65 Princeton reverb is the kind of classic. The, the one we think of yeah, as the classic. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Next thing we know, on the phone to Fender saying, uh, could you send us one, please? Because it's high time we made this video. So that's it. Would you have a Deluxe Reverb reissue, 65 Deluxe Reverb reissue, or a 65 Princeton Reverb reissue? Indeed. Differences, Daniel? So, spec-wise? It's really interesting. The Deluxe has got a 12-inch speaker. The Princeton has a 10-inch speaker. They both use 6v6 valves and yep. a tube rectifier. Um, the Princeton puts out, I think, 15 watts, between 12 and 15 12 watts. watts. 12, 12 watts. They, they quote 12 watts, yeah. Okay. And the Deluxe Reverb is 22. 22. Right. Same power tubes. Same power same tubes. Same rectifier. Yep, exactly. However, the power supply for the Princeton is like a Champ power supply. Right. It's a smaller one. Delivers a lot less current, so it can only deliver a certain amount of power. Um, and that's the difference. That's the difference. Wow. I, I didn't know that before we Googled it, before we got going. Um, more obviously, the Princeton's in a smaller box, slightly smaller box. We'll do close up so you can see. And as Dan says, has a 10 inch. They both have Jensen speakers, ceramic magnet speakers, a 10 inch in the Princeton and a 12 inch in the Deluxe. Worth saying at this point, they've done loads and loads of special issues down the years um, with different speakers, maybe a 12 in the Princeton mm. or a different kind of 12 in the Deluxe. So these are the standard off the shelf reissue amps Yes. as of July. 2021. Beautiful. So we got a number of questions. The questions are, what about clean headroom? Mm -hmm. How loud will it go and stay clean? Mm -hmm. Much more interestingly, what does it sound like when you crank it? What do we like about the overdrive? How does it take some of our classic overdrive pedal flavors? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a listen to the reverbs and tremolo in both amps. Both amps have tube driven reverb and tremolo. 
Um, and then right at the end, we'll ask, what might they sound like in Rhett's dry wig? Beautiful. <laughs> in, a, in a wet dry or dual mono type rig. So uh, enough yakking. Shall we listen, Dan? Sure. I'm okay. going to be up and down a bit because there'll be um, mic preamp gain adjustments to do and turning amps up and down. Dan will do a bit of that as well. Um, I think we should start where we know. With the deluxe. With the deluxe. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, for the record, trebles on six, bases on four and a half. It might change, it might not. All I'm going to do is turn the volume up and down in the vibrato channel and you'll get an idea of its range of tones. We went from four to seven on the volume knob, and before the end of this video, we will put it on 10. Was that seven? Yeah. I think it's important to say at this point, if you know the deluxe reverb, or you have an old one, or you have a reissue, the pot tapers vary drastically. Right. I've known deluxes be in heavy overdrive by about four. This one doesn't do anything at four, takes to like six or seven to really start overdriving. We will in introduce some humbuckers in a minute as well. Um, and some P90s, and maybe something else. Um, so try not to get too hung up on where the numbers are, mm. because the pot tapers do differ. Uh, really, it's about lower levels and higher levels and what that overdrive sounds like. Right. Let's do that exact same thing with the Princeton. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. You heard how much reverb there was at the end. The reverb's on two and a half. It's glorious. It's obviously driving that reverb really hard when you crank it. Absolutely wow. glorious. So we've just we just went from four. Now I'll just say again, four on some deluxe reverbs can already be heavily into overdrive. On this one, it's not. We went from four to seven on both amps, right. 
And uh, for me anyway, that is the the kind of range over which they go from clean to overdrive. Yeah. And get into heavy overdrive. Can't believe that's like between four and seven though, because that that the difference in tonality is crazy. Both of them, I think, somewhere between four and five go from meh to yes. Yeah, right. And just for the last time I'm going to say it, that might happen between two and three on your deluxe or three and four. All right. So, again, try not to get hung up too much on the numbers. Um, okay, I'm going to pick up some humbuckers. Let's talk about clean headroom. Mm. Um, it is the case that Dan and I are both fans of more powerful amps with more clean headroom. However, you've got to say, there's something really special about that. It's just magical. <laughs> it really is. It, it it breaks up in a very different way yeah. than the, the, I don't know, this. it is that classic Princeton thing though, right? It's yep. just magic. Wow. Love. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm back with some forwards to the recording machine because um, there's quite a difference in volume, so I need to just tweak the mic gain volumes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, humbuckers, let me grab a Les Paul. Because this will change the game a little bit. Yep. So that went to 4.5. Yeah, so All let's right. go to five then. Deluxe. In a sec, I think the thing to say about that is we there is no more clean headroom available. No, that's it, done. Because we're I've turned down the guitar a little bit to get the cleaner sounds, but certainly on the neck pickup, the reason I went to the neck pickup is because what you heard was that speaker giving up. Right. Would you do me a favor, yep. Dan? I'll I'm just gonna play on the neck pickup again. Would you turn the bass down from uh six which is it which it's on currently yep. to three and we'll see what difference that makes okay. <laughs> So by turning the bass down, we already have a lot more clean headroom. But I cannot believe the bottom end that's coming out of this thing. It's we when we were setting up to record today, I got down just to play and I could have a listen to make sure the amps were in phase and all that stuff. And I was like, where is all that bottom end coming from? It doesn't make any sense. It's just fantastic. So it's a, it's a good tip that in a small amp, if it is um, overdriving too much, you can turn the bass down, uh, which will really take the weight off the power section. Yeah. and just help clean things up. But I think it's fair to say we're on five. There's no clean headroom. If you've got a loud drummer, the, no, no, forget, no, no chance, literally no forget a clean sound. Yeah. Um, so you'd have to be below, in this case, below five. 
um, or you'd need to be mic'd with really good monitoring and the app set set lower. Mm. I just want to do the same thing with the deluxe. Yeah, cool. If you don't mind. Yeah. It's so interesting because they've got it's that same thing between four and five where it happens. Where it just goes, ah, yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. And I think when I was watching Dan play earlier, that was the point where he started smiling. That sort of magic spot there. And I th I'm guessing the deluxe ought to hold on to the bottom end a bit better, right? <laughs> Some things I've noticed. Dan, can you turn the bass to zero? He turned the bass well to one is as low as it will go. He turned the bass to one, and that's where it sounded great to me. Watch the jewel light. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> extraordinary so interesting so i think we've we found the point of clean headroom especially with humbuckers seems to be in the particular case of these two amps between four and five i think dan um ought to hear the strat yeah 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 yeah. because that will tell a different story so nothing has changed on the deluxe reverb at this point the bass is still off well on one uh, the treble's on six, and the volume is on five. Mm -hmm. A nice round five. Lovely and clean it's at five. Amazing. With single coils. So I guess one one more test, one more common test. P90s, it's exactly the same settings with the deluxe reverb. <laughs> Um, the bass on zero sounds amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> In fact, let's switch over to the Princeton then just quickly, seeing as I've got the same guitar.
And at that point, you can hear it really has nothing left to give, right? But when you start working this and it's got all those crazy dynamics off the volume control, it just sounds glorious. It really does. I think the speaker is giving up as much yeah, as yeah, the amp. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I definitely could hear that in the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the bottom. Have a, have a, have a shrine with buses. It sounds so good. It Wow. What? It's so quick. Mm. There's no flab. It's so immediate. It's got all the lovely, chewy goodness, but it's just, it feels quick to play, especially on this guitar. Yeah, it was when you were playing that bit of country stuff, that's the cleanest I've ever heard you play it. Right. And I think that's because you're feeling it through the amp. Yeah, it just feels so, I'm not having to wait for yeah. anything to yeah. settle down. It's unbelievable. A couple of things I'm finding interesting. One is I'm watching the dB meter as Dan plays there, and we've taken about 10 dB out of our usual peak in here. Wow. So if we're using the matchless and the two rock, for example, we'd be peaking at 105, 106, 104, something like that. And with the caveat that we're not sure if it's in any way accurate or what sort of measure it is, it is nonetheless a constant. Mm. So we've, we're like 94, 95, 96. Wow. But it still feels big. It does. It's way more... I mean, you still get kicked out of your apartment for playing that loud and off most stages these days as well. But it feels more realistic yeah. from a volume point of view, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. One thing, just before we move on, um, we didn't actually hear the strap through the Deluxe, so we'll do that last before we move on. I just want to try the two inputs okay. on the front of the Princeton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you play, I'll just swap the inputs okay. over. Okay, okay. That breakup, that particular breakup, it doesn't sound like any other amplifier. <laughs> it's so interesting. We were up to six there. I put it up to six and just swap between the number one and number two input. Usually on Fenders, the number two is just a little bit lower. Um, you, you lose a bit of signal, a few dB lower. And you could feel that. Yeah, oh, totally. Right, quick strat on the Deluxe then. Um, just to talk about clean headroom for the final bit. Because we're, you know, we're skirting around that point where the amp goes into overdrive. Sure. What I'll do, I'm going to, I will start turning the Deluxe up. Yeah. 
from this point and see at what point it starts to overdrive with the Strat. Okay, I may have to do some adjustments up there if we're going to do that, but let's okay. give it a go. Did you go over eight? No, it got to eight. Yeah. And it was just creamy and gorgeous and lovely. That was the nice place. It, yeah. But it it just seemed to, didn't get, it just started compressing, right? It didn't yeah, really yeah. get any louder. Really lovely kind of overdrive. Oh, man. So in the context of the sort of thing that we would normally go for and the thing that I've traditionally liked, once that starts giving up on the bottom end there like that, um, is where I start to get out. Because when you right. get with a drummer and a bass player and you lose that definition of the bottom end yep. on the on the bottom strings, and that's happening with the Deluxe and the Princeton. Yeah. If you want a really tight, fast, then you've you've lost it in kind of vintage overdrive. Sure. Which is why people go to twins and supers and stuff. But that vintage overdrive is so lovely to play, isn't it? It's really is something else. It's amazing. The uh, it's really interesting hearing the deluxe, right, at that level. Yeah. And sw sw like swapping between the two, it's like okay, you hear the different bottom end of the deluxe and that sort of stuff. But it's it's not as if the Princeton still doesn't sound fat. No, it sounds really fat. It's sort of blowing my mind a bit. I've got to say, I didn't. I, I genuinely, I thought it would be. That would sound okay, but when you heard it in comparison to the deluxe, you'd be like, oh, "Okay, that's that's a yeah. a little brother type thing." Yeah. But it's got its own thing. Yeah, and it, that we're all used to, aren't we? Sitting on our own playing guitar amps, going, "Wow, oh, this sounds great," and I really like it. And it's massive and big and fat. And then the second you get into a band, yeah. you just don't need all that bottom end anymore. Um, and the Princeton's already there, isn't it? Yeah, it does have a lot of bottom end. But Surprising amount of bottom. You end. can you can afford to to turn it down and then get the, the headroom that comes from that. All right. Um, so neither of them are exactly a Dumble steel string singer when it comes to clean headroom. Indeed. And if you want really massive clean headroom and super clean sounds, uh, neither of these amps are, are for you really, if no. you play at any sort of appreciable volume. I think we knew that, right? One of them's 12 watts and one's 22 watts. So the much more interesting thing is where that chewy, Overdrivey just starts to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. let's let's crank them then and see uh, see what happens when they're absolutely balls out. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll turn them up. I'll turn them up.
that was flat out. Ten. Ten, and it just sounded superb. Yeah, rolling off the volume on the Strat, do exactly the same thing with the Leicester. So the start point that we have with the Strat, we're already overdriving with the Leicester. Yeah, at five, yeah. At five. Princeton on 10. Princeton on 10, volume control on the guitar. You've got to have a go on that. You have to have a go on that. Honestly.
<laughs> wow. Gee, it's been a while since I've felt that. Yeah, just in case anyone was confused, that was both amps flat out. That was amazing. That's pretty nice. How I'll tell you what, I wasn't expecting, actually. Then to handle on 10. Yeah, I thought it would just be really awful, you know, but um, so the bass in the Deluxe Reverb is just over one, mm. and in the Princeton is down to two and a bit. So the bass is off quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I was expecting to flab out much worse than that. Very musical, and actually, even off the Leicester, where it's 50s wiring and there's super PAF style pickups, mm. you know, really, really traditional style pickups, cleaned up. Cleaned up real nice. Yeah, beautifully. Yeah. There you go. I mean, it almost it almost seems wrong to plug any overdrive pedals in now. Wrong is a strong word. It is. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> if you had to pick one now, then let you say you weren't oh, a pedal player, man. which would you pick? I would pick the Princeton, primarily because I'm. I can hear how that might pair with another one of my <laughs> amplifiers. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> but this, I... The Prince is not going back then, it seems, at this point. I would I would like it to not go back. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. However... You've got to send us an invoice then. For <laughs> however, um, what's just surprised me is how different they feel, oh. right? And for some reason, there's that, there's that, like I said before, there's that quick response with that, and I'm just, yeah. I'm feeling every edge, and it's, yeah, man. It does, it definitely, it seems to me anyway, Dan likes a very kind of specific way in which the trebles work and break yeah, up, and yeah, that yeah. is, I can just feel it ticking all your boxes. Man, so much so. Yeah, I love it too, but it's, it's very, especially your thing, isn't it? Yeah. All right, Um, right, let's do this super quick then. We've got three flavors of classic gain pedal on the board we've got a good old-fashioned ts9 tube screamer it's completely standard you don't need us to tell us what a tube screamer does so we won't that's normally where we explain it um, the brown uh, amplification um protein dual which is kind of noble's odr1 on one side and kind of blues breaker on the other mm -hmm. And then the Boss TB2 Wazza Tone Bender, which is a Mark II Tone Bender? Yes. Ish? Yeah. Yeah, built in collaboration with Solar Sound. So, um, first, so cool. first time we've seen that. So we'll just have a quick blat through these and see what happens. We'll stick the amps in their sweet spot, which I think we both decided was about five and a bit, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they're not overdriving too much, but they are driving a bit, and the pedals will certainly push them even harder than that. So we're talking about an ecosystem here. We're not hearing the pedals, we're hearing the creation of what happens next. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Thank you. 
Interestingly, it's not a million miles away from the amp itself cranked. No. This is a whole discussion, right? But when you when you hear an amp cranked, right? Take take you know that or a Marshall or whatever, you crank it, it's like, yeah, that's a sound. If you turn it down to a clean thing and stick some gain to the front end, you're still getting the basic shape yeah. and thing of the, of that amp, you know. It's, um, yeah, and then you can you know shape from the uh, EQ wise and that sort of stuff with with a pedal. But it's almost but yeah. like the more the amp starts to do its own thing, the harder it is to get it out of that thing. Right. So you're just getting it to do more of that thing. Totally. Yep. Totally. Okay. As soon as you just heard that into the Princeton, let's hear it into the deluxe. Then the deluxe is also on five. Um, Let's start with that side of the protein. So the deluxe is holding on to the pedal yeah. so much more. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say better or worse, it's just holding on to it more. Yep. And you hear more of the character of the pedal, mm. like the way the mids came through in it there on the green side. To wit, Tube Screamer Dan? Indeed. Um, here's the Princeton there. I had to double check when we were playing with the Princeton, if the Princeton, you could, obviously you could hear when the pedal kicked in, but it wasn't a million miles away. The difference is lessened, was, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but with the Deluxe, it's like, okay, there it is and it's, it's glorious. But the Princeton's sort of like, I'm already at yeah. this point and I'm okay, I can, I can yeah. go a little bit more, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then uh, Princeton Tone Bender.
very different experience. Yeah. Very, very cool. Very different experience. It, it, okay, so at this point, it, it makes a lot of sense why fans of Princeton's and old Tweed Amps too, but small amps cranked go, just don't get overdrive pedals. Yeah. Okay. They make no sense whatsoever. Because the effect they have on the, in, the, in the Princeton is, you know, sometimes glorious, sometimes messy. Mm. But the effect they have in the Deluxe is colossal. Mm -hmm. Completely different frequency response. The power section is doing a whole different thing. Well, it's got a, it, it can handle it. Yeah. It can just handle it. Yeah. And I, I genuinely don't think the Princess has more glorious than when it's doing its thing. Yeah. And really, the only thing you want to give it after that is a maybe a booster, a shaper. But sure. Anything too, with too much color at that point just, well, it is so interesting. kind of makes it worse for me, but. Yeah. So interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, My brain is going a million miles an hour thinking about. So, so what's new? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, like, you know, sending a booster to that and an OD to the matchless and that sort of, you know, the sort of sounds, because I'm, I'm just falling in love with the sound of that thing. It's just glorious. It's killer, isn't it? But moreover, how it feels to play. Yeah. yeah. Let us have a quick listen to the reverbs and tremolos very quickly. And then we're going to ask for the final question, as you would expect from that pedal show. Clearly, the way we want to use them is both of them together in some sort of wet dry rig. So we'll have a quick listen to the reverb and trems. Mm -hmm. um, both sound glorious so far, mm -hmm. reverb wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll just dial in some wet dry sounds. Presumably, Dan, you've got it set up so the deluxe oh, yeah. is wet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, OK. <laughs> reverb and tremolo then. Uh, Daniel? Play ye thy electronical guitar for sooth.
Is that wet dry? No. You could do worse. Um, for all those times you've been asked, what should I put with my Princeton for a wet dry rig? Yeah. Delights. The answer for me wouldn't be another Princeton. No. It would be something a bit more powerful. Yeah. And what should I put with my Deluxe or Hot Rod Deluxe or clearly not the same thing, but more powerful amp. What's the, what's the dry amp to go with it? Killer, isn't it? Unbelievable. I mean, that's pretty loud in here. I think you'd get kicked off most stages these days for playing that loud. Mm. Um, good news is it doesn't have to be that loud, but we we do think that sweet spot. I'd be, we'd be really interested to hear from you lot where that sweet spot is on your particular amp. Because yeah. I bet the same sound where it goes from kind of to hello. Yeah, it's a, it's a really specific spot, right? Will you, be in a different place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's between four and five or five and six or three and four. Try not to get too hung up on the numbers, as we've said all along. But that point of most change where it starts to happen is really magic. Mm. And it, it does explain the enduring popularity yeah. of mid-power amps like these. Totally. Because if you think of a normal gig thing, right, you can get the amp sounding lovely without, you know, killing people. Mm. It can it can still be working, working to a point where pedals are going to sound great into it. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. I don't know if I, I don't the Princeton on its own. I think you'd you'd struggle. D a, depending on, I mean, there's plenty of people that do use Princeton's uh, as their main amps. Of course, Jim Campolongo. Let's uh, talk about him for a second. Um, and if it's mic'd and that's your sound, fair enough. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got doable, all, yeah, but right. I guess in our world of wanting a bit more headroom for pedals and stuff like that, and a bit more clean, then yeah, you're right. Mm. Yeah, Does he use a single Princeton? 
I'm not sure about that. Um, or does he use 10 all chained together? No, I'm not sure. I mean, he has a very particular sound and style. But you heard it when it was on 10, volume roll back, it cleaned up. Amazing. So it is, you know, it's Completely certainly possible. Doable. Depends on your, you know, on your attack, all those things. We don't need to go into that. Yep. So you've got to have one of these amps down. Which one are you having? Ah, uh, I'll have the Princeton, please. Yeah. I think I'd go with the Deluxe just for the more headroom. Yeah. But there is something so unbelievably magic about that Princeton. I, yeah. I think you'll be hearing it a lot on TPS, actually, mm. from, from now on. I'm, I'm seriously feel connected and moved by the sounds coming out of that thing. I, you know, again... You know, look at the topology of the amplifier and the power section, sorry, the valves and that sort of stuff it uses. But changing that, the power supply, giving it a 10-inch speaker instead of a 12. Yeah, if you looked at the spec sheet, you'd go, well, these are exactly the same, except that one's a bit quieter and yeah. has a smaller speaker. But they really are tremendously different. Tremendously different. Big tip of the hat to the reverb and trem circuits. Man. The reverb, particularly in the Princeton, is just a beautiful thing. It's glorious. Really fantastic sounding thing. And this is, this is not a special handmade job no, either. This they are expensive a... now. I was, I was quite shocked. I saw on the website, on Fender's website today, this is July 2021, and I think the Deluxe Reverb is over £1,700 now, and the Princeton's over 1300 I mean, that really? is a lot of money, yeah. Wow. That's quite a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But hey, there but you hey. go. There you go. Okay. We hope that was useful. Indeed. We yeah. said, let's do this quickly, because, you know, <laughs> there won't be that much to talk about. Not entirely sure how long we are in. Well over an hour, I would imagine. And, and 15. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, well, brilliant. I wouldn't be that pedal show if it was short. Of would course, it? of course, of course. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank Indeed. you so much for your support. Also, a big thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can buy these things. Indeed. And our dear friends in Australia... Uh, would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, thank you for the shirts, by the way. They're really cool. Yes, thanks for sending them, Matt. We should be wearing them, but, you know, yeah. we've got to push our own merch, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't... I lost my clothes since the move, so yeah. I've been wearing the shirt that you gave me last week and the shirts that, that Pedal Empire <laughs> sent me. So I've been walking around looking like an overdrive pedal yeah. for, for most of my house move. Um... Also, a uh, massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed t-shirts and uh, strings and pedals and hats and journals. and Yeah, buy stuff. If you That's the main way we fund this show is via the sale of merch. So if you want to buy stuff, that is greatly appreciated. The uh, One of the other ways is if you buy stuff from sweetwater.com, the links are in the description if you click it down. Um, if you use that link, Dan and I get kickback off that, and that is very useful too, so for those of you in the United States. Brilliant. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you for VCQ uh, at 5 p.m. GMT plus one, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, on Monday. We'll see you then. See you then. Bye. Bye.